Yep. And anyone else you want to bring with you? I see you've got Mark with you, and I suppose making for your scones. Welcome. Hi, thank you. And thanks. Hi, everyone. And um, thank you for letting me speak. I know most of you, but there's three or four that I don't. So, um, yeah, thanks for this opportunity. For those of you who don't know me, I'm um, a community coordinator working in the eastern suburbs predominantly with the elderly in the Christchurch East um, areas. And we run, we, I coordinate um, nine groups for the elderly during the week. And we run a lot of other um, community activities as well, as long as the, the veggie co-op, foot care, lunches, and many other activities and functions. Any excuse, well, any time we can have a good time, we do. Um, high teas at, um, in June for Queen's birthday and anything like that, and scones with the councillors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who won? Who won? And that? muffins. I don't think. I don't think Yanni's very good no, at Nikki that. No, Nicky Wagner won. You, 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 right. you were too fast, Ali. Joe, Joe judges. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, firstly, Pauline, thank you for stopping um, for um, doing your your um, not reducing the strengthening communities fund in February, back in February. Thanks for that. Yeah, and all, all the other councillors as well that supported that. We we really appreciate that. Um, secondly, I hope you've all read the um, comments on behalf of the Christchurch East um, community groups that um, that that. Are, that I submitted with the original submission. And I've also got comments today from other groups in the eastern suburbs, all right, other community leaders in the eastern suburbs. Thirdly, um, I'd really want to say that I, we, you know, all of us here, I'm sure, appreciate the difficult position that the council's in, particularly at the moment financially. We really appreciate that. But, we, <laughs> but we're, all, and we're all aware that it's a very difficult time and only in the press last night, I read it last night, not the morning, there was four groups in the first six pages wanting the Christchurch City Council for various funding and support, and I thought, gosh, where do you draw the line? But, you know, I feel really strongly that and still making this submission despite the, the financial problems that you're having, because the funding in the area, we're the grassroots people, we're dealing with the, with the rate payer, the participants on the ground, and they're, they're our people. We've got to look after them. At the time, the, uh, as, as the title of this fund suggests, um, the council recognises the contributions that our organ organisations are currently making to society. Our community groups are the anchors of our society. As you'll probably be aware, it has been stated by many people that we are the anchors in their troubled seas, we are their rocks, and we are the glue that holding the communities together. And? and? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> the health and the welfare of participants in attendance is already under huge stress, and right. this will become even more fragile and stretched by further reduction in funding. We're convinced that costs this fund will eventually um, cost health boards and government agencies a lot more money in the long term. We feel there will be an increase in depression, health issues, and in some cases it may lead to substance and abuse and domestic violence. As we all work with people suffering from loneliness and social isolation, this in turn will cost the society an individual happiness, lack of social cohesion, and we all know that that is very, very important, especially in these times after the earthquakes. Our organisations add welfare and well-being of our societies. As well, we create stronger individuals and create more competent communities. The health and welfare is already under huge stress, and this will become even more fragile and stretched by further reduction in the funding. To validate this statement, I'm submitting a quote from Dr Rob Gordon, and I hope the councillors all went and saw one of his, attended one of his lectures. He was excellent. Yep. He's a psychologist that's worked with the fires and the hurricanes and flooding over in Australia, and he's brilliant. He states, it takes seven years for a community badly affected by disaster to recover. What helps these communities most to recover is, one, involvement, two, connection, three, community, and four, fun. 
I really endorse this statement and I feel we provide all of the above. Community groups give excellent value for money with hard-working, modestly paid coordinators and a large team of great volunteers who assist us. Two of them are here to, with me today. A reduction in funding will result in the dilution and a, and a decrease of the service that we currently provide. We urge the Council to adjust the budgets if possible, if possible to not reduce the funding but to instead to increase it, at least in, in line with inflation. We urge strongly that no reduction to allocated funding be made. I understand the final decision is going to be made next month in June. I know that a number of you have already been attendants at the Wainaini Adams Side Community Services Trust, but I know the Chairman of the Trust would not mind me saying now, he's actually going to extend an invitation for you all to attend our group so you can actually see what's happening, meet the people, see the, see the location we're in. We're doing our very utmost best, we are. And um, Rod Rodney Routledge is the Chair, he'll be sending you an invitation. The, the day that you'll meet the most participants is on a Wednesday and look, we'd really welcome you there to see the programme at work, see what we do and talk to the attendees, attendees yourself. Um, thanks for this time and you know, in times of disaster we need this more than ever. We need it. We cannot stop the community grassroots work. We, the people, I've had, we've got people that have shifted to the west, as you'll be aware of, because I'm, we're in the middle of the red zone where we are. But those people are still coming back to Wainoni because that's their community, that's their friends. They, in time, maybe they, they will stop coming, but at the moment they're still all coming because they really need it. And that's, it was a forced move. It was a forced mm. move that they had to go. And they're still, they're still travelling from Ireland, from Hornby, from Northcote, and it's great that they're still all coming. So please, we need, we need the funding. We, know we can't have it stopped or cut, reduced. Betty, Thank you. Betty, can I ask you a question? If, we, if, if you had a choice between continuing with the current grant system where every year you have to apply for a grant, you're not quite sure how much you're going to get, or if we gave you funding for your salary so that you could just get on and do your job, um, for the community, with the community, accountable directly to your, cut, uh, your trust. Yes. Which one would you choose? The second. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. Yanni. Thank you. you. You talked about Rod Gordon, and um, one of the interesting things, of course, is you referred to the work he's done in Australia around bushfires, hurricanes, and flooding. I, I just, you know, we hear a lot about the earthquakes and the stress that's put people under. We have had major flooding events, and I, and I just wondered, you know, sometimes I think people sort of, it's a little bit underestimated just the impact that the flooding's had on people, particularly, I know you're right in an area that was really badly affected. Absolutely. Can you just tell us a little bit about, you know, the impact of that second major natural disaster on um, the community? Look, for a week they didn't come. I, I hardly had anyone turn up, because it was just another piece, another thing that they had to cope with. The elderly and and yeah, they, they stayed away. I had a week with it was horrible. I, I like people, um, you know. So I didn't. It, it did. It was just another stress. They actually became another wave of, of depression hit them. All right. Well, so you, you got to really. I, I create events to, and ring them all and say, hey, this is what we're doing next week. You know, are you able to attend? We're open. You know. So that that's what I do, Yanni. I keep. I, because if, if, if the people, if some of them, what, one of my ladies, she came to me during the week and she said it's taken me two hours to leave home to get here. And she had, I'd asked her to do, I'd got Sarah in, she's still in the position where she's in between, uh, she doesn't know if there's EQC or insurance yet. And I said, and I introduced the guy from Sarah, the communications guy, and I said, look, this is the guy, you know, will you ring him? Yes, she would. She hadn't rung him still. So I said, right, next week, if you haven't rung him, we'll do it together. Right, you come into my office, the door will be shut, and we'll make that call to the Sarah person. But that's how fragile some of the elderly, some of the elderly are going fine, they're okay. Um, in fact, the, the, the initial red zoners, they're the lucky ones. 
because they're, they're re-established now and they're, they're actually quite, they're okay in their u, u, new units. But it's the TC3s, right? It's the ones that are still living in that area. They are fragile. They, I've got one lady yesterday, she rang me. Um, she is in her 80s, she's got health issues. She was supposed to have, have her house rebuilt, the commencement of her house rebuild was February. It's now gonna be finished in December this year. So this is what we're dealing with. Yes, you do. Yeah, absolutely. This is what we deal with all the time. But this is why, you know, this is why Dr. Rob Gordon says, have fun. I am mm. having fun. But we do have serious, um, we do have a, anyone that I can think of. I've had people on depression, sleep issues, anything that I can think of that will help those people, help the woman and, and the men. I've got a dozen men or so now too. Um, get through this, I get them in. Every fortnight I have, a, I have a speaker and it's always, it's still, a lot of it's still currently relating to the, um, to the earthquake. Betty, the, be. thank you. The, I mean, the, the time's up, but, yep. um, you know, I mean, a, a number of us know your work very well. We've been there uh, many times. I, of course, know it as a former MP for the area, but... Um, <laughs> Thank you publicly Thank you. for what you do in the community. You're, uh, you know, if you could be cloned and your blood could, blood could be bottled and um, shared around, uh, we would want to choose you for that for that cloning. So. Thank you very much for everything that you do. You've made a really impassioned plea, but I really like your answer to my question. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes. I know. Every um, yeah. Is this only uh, not for profit leases in the entire red zone. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah. And even that's on borrowed time. Mm. <laughs> and right, can well, I just say that yes. it's those of us who have gone through what we've gone through, but this is still important to yes. us. Yeah. It was when I read the. Article. I thought, oh, don't we really matter anymore? Oh, no, but, no, you yeah. do matter. But it, I'm, I'm thinking of a new way of delivering yes, the funding, yes, which idea. would actually reduce the cost of delivering the funding oh, and yes. produce a much better result for the community because they wouldn't have to send applications in every year and cross their fingers that they're going to get what they got the last year. Yes. Anyway, so, so we'll just take, can, can we just grab a cup of tea and come back?